You're looking at Monticello Mountain, once the home of Thomas Jefferson, who founded and built the University of Virginia. And today, these venerable old grounds will host the 1977 NCAA Lacrosse Championship. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford. These are the sticks on the right, the goalie in the middle, is the defenseman stick and the attack stick. The 1977 NCAA Lacrosse Championships. Let's meet the players. First, Johns Hopkins. Let's begin with their goalie. Kevin Mahan, senior, Tassel, Maryland. Mark Greenberg, freshman, Baltimore, Maryland. Kurt Aronson, sophomore, Rochester, New York. Michael Connor, junior, Baltimore, Maryland. Bob D. Simone, junior, Plainview, New York. Bobby Mooney, senior, Seaford, New York. Tom Myrick, senior, Towson, Maryland. Michael O'Neill, junior, Massapequa, New York. Frank Catrone, sophomore, Uniondale, New York. Rich Hirsch, senior, Plainview, New York. And head coach, Henry Ticaroni, a former All-American at Johns Hopkins. Now the Big Red, first All-American goalie. My name is Dan Maxey. I'm a senior from Ithaca, New York. My name is Chris Kane. I'm a junior. I'm from Port Washington, Long Island. My name is Bob Katz. I'm a junior from Baltimore, Maryland. My name is Frank Muleman. I'm a junior. I'm from Franklin Square, Long Island. My name is David Bray. I'm a senior. I'm from the Cataraugus Indian Reservation in New York State. My name is Craig Jager. I'm a junior, and I'm from Massapequa, Long Island. My name is Bob Hendrickson. I'm a junior, and I'm from Manhasset, Long Island. Tom Marino, junior, Massapequa, Long Island. Steve Page, junior, Levittown, New York. Amy McInerney, class of 77, Elmont, New York. And the Big Reds, head coach, the fiery Richie Moran. Ready now for the face-off. The teams are on the field for Johns Hopkins in the white. It'll be number 42, Bob Mamoni. For Cornell, number eight, Craig Jager. A very important play in lacrosse, Gene. This is a critical play in lacrosse uh, over the course of a game between two evenly matched teams. A team that controls the face-offs can very often control the game. And as you'll see, Frank, here's a good example. The ball just being loose. And the team that can come up with it the most times really has an advantage. The scramble continues, and Hopkins saves it. And All-American Mike O'Neill gets it out in front. Mamoni fires the shot and misses. Mike O'Neill has the ball. Leading scorer, and he's taken away. The junior defenseman for Cornell, Chris Kane, comes up for it. Clearfield looking for McEnany, finds him. McEnany spinning and twisting. And Cornell has a man in the crease. Of course, in lacrosse, substitutions can be made on the fly or when time is out, such as out of bounds. Okay, here's the main man, McEnany. Leading scorer, great decision. Working against Mark Greenberg of Johns Hopkins. And he gets by him. Back in any scores, and Cornell's on the board. That was a classic example of just an isolation play. McEnany took uh, Greenberg out to the sideline and just started working on it. And I'll tell you, McEnany last year played with those two great Mike French and uh, John Levine, and he's something. Here he comes again. He gets by Greenberg, sizzles it in there. This is why they call him the demon. Earlier, Gene had a chance to talk with him. Now, Eamon, this is the second time around. How does it feel going in without Mike French and John Levine, your two buddies? Uh, well, playing the whole year without him, I'm kind of adjusted to the situation uh, being without him. But uh, sure, it would be nice to have him back again, you know. And, uh, I'm sure we could do it without him, you know. We've gone the whole season without him, so today should be no different. And Cornell, Cornell controls again. He's written back, and they get it to the man they like to have control, the playmaker, McEnany. Yeah, they'll settle down. Arnell leading one to nothing. Written back, over the corner to McEnany. This is where he started before, Frank, right back here on the back line. Looks Starting. like a replay. Again against Greenberg of Hopkins. McEnany to Page, and Page scores. Beautiful assist by McEnany. Started out with the same maneuver he scored on earlier. And then passed off to Page. Page drills it in. Here it is again. McEnany is, is probably one of the best that's ever played the game at setting up teammates. Just unbelievable at it. It has all the poise in the world. 
Okay, Cornell off to a good start. They lead Johns Hopkins two to nothing. We'll be right back. Johns Hopkins has been stunned by Cornell. Cornell off to a two to nothing lead in the early minutes of the NCAA lacrosse championship game. And keep in mind, last week they scored 22 points. Johns Hopkins did against Maryland. Of course, Cornell beat Navy 22 to six. Hopkins in the white. That's their All-American O'Neill. Huntley fires a shot, and his shot has been clocked at over 90 miles an hour. Dave Huntley. Now controlled by Cornell. Mackesy fires it out. Cornell on the attack. McEnany. He has just a steadying influence, Gene, on this entire team. Well, they always look for him, and, and he's an attack man, and he tries to be in the right spot so that he can help. He's so quick, you know, he's he's tough. Everybody, he's a fine football player at Cornell, too, but uh, his quickness is just amazing. In fact, the quickness of the entire Cornell team is amazing. Played flanker up there at 150 pounds, so he's a tough little booger, too. Right, Craig Jagger just teasing the defense. Jagger with a good move. Hendrickson to Jagger. Jagger fires and Cornell leads three to nothing. Two juniors, number 24, Bob Hendrickson to Craig Jagger for the score. Frank, it's often been said that uh, lacrosse has become a game of just uh, picking up the loose balls, and there's a great example. Hendrickson, who made some big plays last year, got after that ball and then turned around and looked inside. Here it is. He found the open man, and of course, the goalie had no chance at all. Cornell now on the attack. Hopkins a man short. Hopkins down three to nothing. McEnany, and you're right, Gene. McEnany scores again, and Cornell four to nothing. Now well, once again, there you see it. Uh, they were in a zone. Hopkins was in a zone, and McEnany started around. No one picked him up. They hesitated. They couldn't leave the crease man, and uh, he just beat the goalie. He got his stick around the edge there, and. and it's another goal for Cornell. Back to full straight now. Hopkins, both teams at full straight. Shot fired and miss. Hendrickson misses. And a slashing call again against Hopkins. So there'll be another man short. I'll tell you what, you can't play this game a man down. Uh, it, the problem is not so much sometimes holding the other team down as it is you can't score yourself with a man down. Hopkins needs a score. Cornell working. Hopkins a man short. Go to McEnany. McEnany looking over the field. Watch Jagger. Jagger misses. Time is running out of the first quarter of the Johns Hopkins Cornell NCAA Lacrosse Championship game. And Cornell, the Big Red, has a shocking four to nothing lead. Frank Gifford along with Gene Corrigan. And Gina, I, I don't know what to think. Cornell came out hitting, running, and they have dominated this game. Oh, and it goes over to Moreno. A pass from Hendrickson, and it's five to nothing, Cornell. Oh, this is hard to believe. That, uh, that it's not so hard to believe that Cornell has five goals at this time, but it's hard to believe that the score is five to nothing because Johns Hopkins is such a fine team, and uh, they're such an able team. But Cornell's played flawlessly on defense, and offensively, they've had a lot of opportunities, partly brought on by the uh, extra man, the penalties on Johns Hopkins. 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter, and Cornell has been smoking all the way. And we're late in the fourth quarter. The score is 16 to 5. Cornell over Johns Hopkins for the NCAA Lacrosse Championship. Unbelievable when you think that during the season, Cornell beat this team by a mere one point in a thriller. A great individual play on the part of this Cornell team, and great team play. Mike O'Neill, the All American from Johns Hopkins, makes it 16 6. That was Bob Jackson in a goal for Cornell. Dan Mackesy, who had a great game, has been taken out as we look at it again. This a, is a fine play by O'Neill. Same thing that McEnany did earlier in the game. Came around against the zone and wasn't picked up. Now I mentioned, Jane, that individual play. Eamon McEnany, the All-American from Cornell, had a sensational game. He was 
either scored or assisted on six of Cornell's first eight goals and Cornell led nine to nothing before Johns Hopkins even got on the scoreboard. They did a tremendous job and uh, they got a great game out of Mackesy at the goal and uh, as you mentioned earlier Chris Kane did such a good job on uh, O'Neill. Chris Kane of course bottling up Johns Hopkins fine All-American Mike O'Neill. Hopkins now on the attack again firing and missing. 16 to 6 and well you have to sympathize a little bit with Henry Chickaroni the coach of Johns Hopkins looking on wondering what happened. Hopkins again on the attack. Joe Devlin. And Devlin hits. So Hopkins closing the lead 16 to 7. An unassisted goal by Joe Devlin. That's another fine, fine example of what Hopkins is capable of doing. They just didn't have the ball enough during the game to do it. This is a, a real fine rollback. The uh, Cornell defenseman overcommits. He rolls back and it's all his. There it is again. Crowd still staying. They love this game. And we'll be returning with more action in a moment. Cornell has run away with it. They lead 16 to 7 over Johns Hopkins. The record crowd, most of them still on hand. They've seen superb play. A lot of hitting, a lot of running on the part of Cornell, and great individual play. And Hopkins gets another goal to bring it to 16 to 8. Rick Hirsch assisting Tom Myrie. Extra man play. Hirsch behind the goal, came around against the zone, passed off to Myrick, and he made a fine shot past the goal. Too little and too late as part of that crowd. And a lot of them from Ithaca. This is a neutral field, the grounds of the University of Virginia. And a lot of fans came over from Baltimore. They obviously have to be disappointed. And they are beginning to chant, goodbye, Hopkins. <laughs> and so true. Still, Cornell tries to add more points, team. Cornell's just an aggressive team. I don't think I've ever seen a quicker team or a team that seemed to play with more desire than they do. They just, they're like they let them out of a cage and they just go out and run. They've been going this, at this speed all day long. They're heading for their second consecutive NCAA title, their third since the tournament began back in 1971. An overwhelming victory. They had nine points before Johns Hopkins even got on the scoreboard and it was pretty much all over at that point and the countdown it's all over Cornell has won 16 to 8 over Johns Hopkins and Eamon McEnany the little number 10 150 pounder there he is set a new tournament record 25 points a three game tournament record erasing his teammate of a year ago Mike French's record of 20 he had three goals and five assists a great day and Mackinson also a great day. Cornell, the NCAA lacrosse champion. <laughs> 